This week, the leaves are like flowers, but the trees are losing them because it's fall. We're losing our egos if we dare to give them up. It's that time of year astrologically. Look inwardly and see what you need to let go of. Welcome. Hi there, Virgo, and welcome to your modern shaman, Maria Maria in Rainbow Land, here with the weekly astrology forecast, heartful astrology forecast for the week that starts at the 22nd and ends at the 29th of October 2018. So, this week, well, I'm just going to talk about the Virgo stuff for 5 to 10 minutes and 5 to 7 minutes and draw some cards and then we're going to go deeper into the second part of the program where we're going to go dig deeper in the stuff. Yes. So up to you if you are the fast runners or the ones that wants to go deep. So this week, Virgo, we have the sun entering in your third house of communication and movement and opening up to talking with the world. And already here we know that we have three other planets. So now it's all about you with a Venus conjunction with the sun this week here. Actually being so smooth in your tongue and so charismatic that you can talk your way into many things this week. Definitely also because Venus, who is retrograding, of course, is in a sextile with Saturn in your fifth house of romance, your children, creative projects and your business if you have one. So this can be you really talking your way into if you're not in a relationship, a new partner, where you can really smoothen your tongue, and because these are good aspects for you, <laughs> Virgo. And um, of course, it can also be about you putting boundaries to something, some situation where you didn't feel like there was enough boundaries and you needed to, to set an example to someone in a nice, sweet way so they actually listen, because Venus is harmonizing your tongue as well, who's always uh, often a little sharp here in um, with with your communication house in Scorpio very direct you are usually so you can say it in a, a little bit more diplomatic way this week we also have a full moon in every in um, Taurus this week in the first degree I'm sorry this is saying it's getting late <laughs> And by the way, you're going to see a beautiful video uh, in the collective report of this place where I'm at. I'm at by the fire. Which is becoming a rule rather than an exception. I just love nature being a shaman, so I love being out here. Okay, so we have the full moon there. And the full moon is actually conjuncting with Uranus. The planet of sudden change, sudden shifts in your ninth house where you want to travel where you want to go explore life where you want to come out there in the world and see new sides of it to alter your belief system suddenly uranus can open up a door to a reality that you didn't even see was already there around you because you were wearing these glasses that made the li uh, life look in a certain way in a certain color but Uranus took away that tension and suddenly you see the world in a new way and you're like, whoa, why didn't I see this before? It could happen because she, I am wearing the pink glasses, so I am looking at the positive <laughs> side of life right now. No. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It's the thing. Of course, Virgo, we also have the nodes squaring. We have actually a grand square also between Uranus and the nodes. And it's in your 12th, between your 12th, 6th and your 3rd and your ninth house. So this has all got something to do with, or can have something to do with the tension between you letting go of something that needs you need to release. Something like in a psychological sector, uh, sector where someone from your past you need to let go of. There's something, you know, you need to let go of there. And that has something to do with your 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 need for liberty uh, to uh, for liber to re liber liberate yourself mentally, uh, emotionally, and and physically. And then again, how you communicate with the world, also in your day to day uh, situations, um, there can be some tension there where you need to change and move some boundaries of yours, um, where you maybe feel that 
you have to set a boundary because you did too much for other people or maybe someone else is putting a boundary to you because you said too much. <laughs> Who knows? Let's draw the cards of the week. Card of the week. Card, card, astrology card of the week. Which is another type of card. Cards that I have. Astrology card of the week for the Virgos. What does it have to say for you guys? Let's see. Astrology card of the week for the Virgos is... Oh, here it is. Twelfth house escape. That is the north node is in this twelfth house. So instead of escaping, escaping from reality through stimulants or anything, which is not necessarily your thing, but through some mental stimulant where you just go into studying more and doing more, here you have to receive information from the other side. You have to let go of the mental. You have to let yourself receive and let go. Let, let yourself so open towards all there is through meditation, through some kind of state, where you can go into a state where you feel that you are open, completely open, and you are able to let go at the same time as you receive info about the new stuff that you need to do after you're finished saying goodbye to a part of yourself that no longer serves you. And remember that if anyone is falling out of your life and going away, it's they were meant to go away or come back. It is always like it's supposed to be, so we have to trust the process and then receive the information about which change it is, is, is you have to make in your life that you probably already know, but then how? By not trying to think your way through them, but receive information here in the 12th house. And be ready to let go of things and spend some time alone in order to do that, because that is how you receive that kind of information, not with the television running or three books and YouTube, uh, I'm not saying that you're doing that typically, but it's just that you have to know that in that spirit, more spiritual section, silence is needed because the voices are so subtle from inside of you. Card of the week, whoops, it was this one. <laughs> Venus in your third house of communication, where I said you will be so charismatic and attractive to maybe the opposite sex or at least just anyone around you. Use the Venus this week to smooth talk your way through but just remember of course to follow your heart you see your heart down here most important because we don't want any manipulation here do we don't follow trends follow your heart remember to subscribe comment or like this video if you've liked it and uh, now we want to go on to the collective section we're going deeper into nature and into stuff see you Be still, quiet your mind. We are now at the collective report. We're traveling through with nature. And the first message here is, be still and quiet your mind and your life. This is more important than anything else that I say in any report. Be so still that you can touch your heart and hear your heart beat. Tick, tick, tick. Without this, all of these reports that I do or that you hear are so very unimportant because if you're never still, if you never quiet your mind and hear, the heart speak, then the ego is running the train and you'll be driving around in circles. If you want to get off the train and come to another level, time is up now to find your way into silence and stillness and believe in that you dare let go of your ego and hear and listen to the needs of your higher self. Do you dare to become a servant for something bigger than the ego? Something as a part of you already know the road to, towards or are 
success and control and all your learned programming is more important to you. Have you even discovered who you are or what your calling is? Can you feel this consciously? Oh, there are too much clutter and dirt. If there is too much clutter and dirt, you know what step one will be now. To try to don't identify yourself with the noisy voices inside a certain place which is overruling anything good anyways. It's not giving you any joy and it's over ruling anything inside of you. And this part of you cannot forgive. This part of you will just hold on in order to get drama. Get you in the front seat. Get you in the front of everything you do. You are the loving, forgiving you. Someone who doesn't hold on. Someone who says no to negative manipulation, violence, and power. Who, whenever confronted, just leaves without a fight, quietly and peacefully, if it's not right for you to be there. And if we cannot say no, and stay in this peaceful, quiet ego state where the ego is quiet and you just hear the voice of your heart when you speak. You hear that you are soft in your voice. You hear that there's nothing inside of you that judges the other person. You feel your heart. You feel that you can speak without wanting something from someone else. Then your ego is away. And if someone's overstepping your boundaries, you just say no peacefully with the same voice and you walk away. If you start fighting, you will know that it's no longer you. It's your ego that has started to take over again. My brother, Jacob, he's a math professor. And I love him so dearly. We have had some sort of reunion. Not that we were in a, at a phase where we never saw each other, but... Uh, we reconnected in our hearts in such a beautiful way. And I remember well, two days ago, three days ago, prior to this reading, and I remember that he would always have in his wallet when I was 16 a note that said, no, when he was 16, I was eight, a note that said, treat others like you want to be treated yourself. And he was 16, and he was actually the popular guy in school. And, and isn't it cool that the popular guy is a role model instead of just someone looking good? I love my brother for this. He always tried as the best he could. I mean, we all have ours. But um, as my parents also always tried to treat others kindly. And this is this kind part of our hearts that I'm talking about. I just want to say that anyone who has a lot in Scorpio and um, certain things in their horoscope that are being hit, the crisis are worse for you guys right now. Um, so old fear can be triggered from outside of you to the max and you have to remember that the ones who are triggering it are not the responsible ones for you having this inside of you. So try not to go into the victim role where you let your old fears take you down to that lower part of yourself where you cannot control anything because you're just in affection, thinking you're now being hit or being the victim, being someone who is a victim for someone else. No, 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 someone else is trying to show you something. It's that, like that for all of us. Old fear are triggered from the outside to the max these days. So, Venus is definitely in her crisis week right now. She's squaring the stuff that went up on up there in Aquarius. Um, I won't go too deep in, within, uh, into all of this. So, 
the Venus Uranus opposition and all this also from last week. Um, going into this week, you can expect a sudden turn of events or something. The moon will go through Aries, Taurus, and Gemini. So the moon will start off trying to start new stuff up with energy and a lot of yeah, let's do this oomph and fire and um, maybe also selfishness, but it will square the things up there in the tenth house. So there will be some confrontations with authority figures or and some letting go during the first part of the week. Moves into Taurus, crosses over. Uranus and it's in opposition to all the things in Scorpio. This means that we will definitely feel tense and increased tension around the things we are working with right now as, as we move into the middle part of the week. And um, as we were uh, Wednesday, as it means Uranus, a sudden shift change of events can happen again. Then at the weekend, next week, it will be in Gemini, communicating, talking, being out and about, King Kong sing. the things in Scorpio, weird, awkward things can come up as well, situations, uh, but the energy will be a, a little lighter than it was middle week, but definitely an intense week still as we are now, really in Scorpio. So uh, with the sun as well. So the, there's different change of directions um, with Venus in this Venus retrograde phase that I've mentioned many times, which is 40 days and nights until the 15th of November. And then out of the actual whole cycle in, at the 18th of December. So it's a long cycle, but there will be shifts for you around the 31st of October when Venus is in Libra again, where she's at home, more light air energy instead of Scorpio. So a shift on the 31st of October. A shift again on the 16th of November, or 15th, 16th, depending on where you are, when she's at the bottom of her bow tie in her retrograde phase, um, you will now feel that you are able to move forward with a new light and new glasses on and all the, all the ex very, very deep and hardest issues in your relationships might, it might be possible to let go of here, but only if you really feel them, so it also feels the hardest. So... Um, at the 2nd of December, she'll be back into Scorpio again in opposition to Uranus. So a lot can happen here too. There's a turning point that does it so that the things that you thought were like they were aren't like that at all. And we are going through over the critical zone again here and see what the future can bring for us after all of this. What have we learned? How can we do this even better when we're in relationships? Can we re do re-decide re some of the things that we decided for early on and that we maybe discovered weren't the right things for us, but we learned from. For the Scorpios themselves, relationship situations shift constantly now, new people in and out constantly. So there's a full moon this week, as I said, so it's going to be a very intense week. We mean it's opposition to Uranus, something really strong, some really strong intensity comes in and the notes are squaring Uranus as we talked about. Um, that is really intense in this grand cross. So money and intensity and sexuality are the things that's going on in Scorpio. So other people's money, your money, what do we do with money? Money we share with other people, um, sexually reshaping, redoing, reformulating things in regards to these things. With Venus retrograde here and Jupiter, Mercury is here, Sun is here. So it's all about relationships on a deep level, also the relationship to ourselves. So all water signs are endings, and um, the first six signs in the zodiac are personal signs and they are all about me i am i have i think i feel etc and the next six are the impersonal um, signs and we have entered a month ago the impersonal signs where it's about us and the other people in 
different levels. So usually something new starts in Aries, and Aries is the unconscious energy, sign number one. And the actions through Taurus and Gemini and Cancers are are unconscious about what it's doing. Um, and it ends this unconscious doing and moving about, etc., is, is ending in Cancer. Um, in the water a sign of cancer, the fourth sign. So we go through fire, earth, air, water. So we start with the fire and areas, we go into the earth energy, calm down, feeling can be heavy in Taurus. Then we go to the air energy, talk about lightness, skirting over the surface in, in Gemini. And then a little bit heavy with water, it's always heavy because it seeks towards the ground, right? And dies with, is flushed away with the water and cancer. That was the unconscious energy and actions. And then we'll have a self conscious period with Leo where it starts again with fire. And then ideas and going into Vir uh, Virgo, where it's uh, earth energy grounding them, manifesting, materializing the ideas. And then the self-consciousness moves into uh, Libra uh, and develops in regards to relationships. And then into water again. Libra was also air talk, you know, being about in a lighter thing. And then going um, into Scorpio, into water signs where we are now killing the self-consciousness because we are now in the transpersonal signs and uh, the transpersonal cycle when it starts in, in, in Sagittarius but we have to kill it first in Scorpio it's a cycle and this is how we how we learn and grow on a spiritual and personal level through the zodiac um, so everything, Jupiter, Sun, Venus and Mercury are in the Scorpio, so it's the death of our self-consciousness and it's really spiritual, mega spiritual, a really mega big spiritual opportunity to ascend, of course. Ascension time, spiritual people, light workers, let go of your ego now and your hurt and your wounds and your blaming others. It's your past you're letting go of. Don't kill the messengers, please. All of our challenges here as spiritual uh, as, uh, beings are often our ego. That often are more here in the self-conscious and unconscious part of the first six times. Science. But now we have the chance to really move. So even though we have a higher self and even though we have souls in this whole story and we are... Um, beings, souls and bodies here that usually are just infinite beings in contact with everything, with God or whatever, and then we are also incarnated in this body, in this incarnation, life after life. And in this body, we have an ego that loves drama. And this ego is making the big show, which does that we are effing around in our minds. And we cannot find this, this moderation and relaxations because desires, wants, and I want more and bigger, new and better, drama, attention. It's the ego. So that it doesn't have to be removed, it'll just be more and more noisy as you try to get silence. So when you start meditating, trying to get into your silence, I talked about in the beginning, you have to know that the ego will be louder. Don't be fooled by it. Stop being the victim of your ego, of other people feeling like it. See that you create your reality. Okay, There's a reason why people do to watch you what they do. Find out why. It's because you're not in your heart. Always is because you're not in your trust position of the heart. Yeah, well, it's because Peter was also always a jerk. So of course, I cannot trust him. No, no. But if you really cannot trust Peter, why are you with three Peter? Did you give him a chance of being trusted with all of your heart and love? What did you contribute with? Did you dare to walk away from him and treat yourself with that love and respect that you want from others? Because that's what you have to do if you want love and respect. Well, so physically and emotional drama is, is what the ego wants and pleasure. So the, the brain that won't stop thinking is Mercury, rational thoughts. But in Scorpio, Mercury cannot be rational. He will feel the intensity. 
Usually he wants to say that oh, if I do this and this, then that and that happens. But here you don't have, he doesn't have control. From, but he can see with his heart and his feelings if he dares to. So try to, to use him to investigate, be the detective, as I said last week. So, well, the ego comes up in Leo, and then we have to go to Virgo to get the control of the whole thing. So, Re Venus is reviewing our connections also to the body. Venus, and, and it, actually, um, Venus is, is the earthly love, but we also have a more spiritual love with Neptune, and Neptune is the higher octave of Venus, so when Venus goes direct, you'll be coming into a beautiful sign with Neptune. Um, well, it will still be a while, and uh, Jupiter is going through Scorpio, and he will... Um, coming to Grand Trine with Chiron. So there will be beautiful, higher spiritual love waiting for us after this ascension process. Don't hold your breath, but know deep inside your heart that everything will be solved and healed if you dare to let go of your need to control. In Scorpio, we're dealing with issues like loss, betrayal, abandonment, neglect, and abuse, forces beyond our controls, from our partners, ourselves, and our impulses, instincts, and a power th through merging with other people and uniting on a deep level. This is connection. The deepest connections is in Scorpio with sexual drive, sexual power, and force. And yeah, you know, society is ruled by this these days, uh, this force, because it's beyond, it's, it's like the stimulus, like alcohol, drugs, and sex has become a drug, and it's just be um, so accepted, because everyone does it, then it's okay, it's like, also, okay, but also like in Denmark, people drink a lot, and it's like, well, everyone does it, so it's, that's normal, and thereby accepted, yeah, but when you, if you drink, when you drink, you are take, if you work on your spiritual self and you, whenever you drink, you have to know that that takes you. Because spirituality, when you clear yourself spiritually and meditate, you get into higher levels, higher realms. And every time you drink, you take yourself all the way down and again you have to start all over. And the same thing with sexual um, stimulants, wanting more, more, more. You're just feeding the ego, right? So, um, well... We have to open ourselves for, in Scorpio for the positive sides of Scorpio, and that has something to do with, with trust, so that we can heal these wounds uh, and love and trust again. So we can open ourselves up for deeper forms of intimacy, connections to others. And the whole intention is to experience this beautiful, sacred sexuality where we connect with our soulmates are twin flames on a spiritual level not just to get stimuli and not just to but we also have to know that of course we take away some of our spirituality if we just use as the sexual intercourse to get and i'm i just want to be honest here um i don't remember the english word now when we, when we get release you know males or females um, our spirituality also drops. Uh, so if this is what we want, and we do this after two minutes just to get the release, yeah, well, boom, the energy goes out. We have to know that. But if we use this thing we have with each other to go deeper, deeper, deeper within, then it's something else. We can experience this beautiful, sacred sexuality. And yeah, I mean, the society stimulus, stimulus has something to do with something new and exciting and with all this Tinder and stuff. But sacred union is about real, lasting stimuli for the soul that we can use in the long run as a soul being, even when we're not here. It's when we can reach deeper in when we are together with our partner instead. But how do we do it? Well, exploring spirituality between us and, and reach new and fresh layers in, in, inside of ourselves instead of always seeking outwards, outwards, outwards as the whole of society is trying to make us. 
like this new times relationships, spiritual relationship will be that we be we will stay together and more twin flames in, will incarnate at the same time to 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 uh, raise and rise up the the vibrational level here um, on the planet, and it's our responsibility to go deeper in as conscious light workers instead of fearing into new relationships unless it's uh, supposed to happen, of course. But uh, when we know we found the right person, then use the hard times and to to instead take responsibility for ourselves, help each other through the hard times. You know, help each other when 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 the ego comes out. Instead of just always saying, "Okay, you're not good enough. Uh, I don't want you. You have too many errors." Then help the soul, goddammit, Instead. Of just escaping and putting more fear into the person, try to help, and you'll get it back. We get what we give. It's the whole deal. Yeah. So um, soon enough, we'll have Sag, Jupiter and Saturn and expand our consciousness, have fun, explore life on another level. So where do you get your physical and emotional pleasure from? Last thing today, it was a long report, is that if we really want to love, we have to get let go of the hurt ego and forgive. The more you feed your ego, the more hurt you will get. The more you feed your ego, the louder it shouts. And um, when it wants this and that in, in, in uh, you know supermarket and you just give it to it it will just shout louder and that's why it's good to meditate and find soul peace and find out what you actually came here to do on a soul level what is your purpose if you can't pinpoint it mentally then go into your heart and feel every day when you walk around am i doing something that makes my heart happy it can just be that you start smiling to other people and spreading love and joy just like that. It's a simple thing. We don't all have to become like this big, great thing. It's just a society that says that. Find your path. Maybe your sole purpose is just to put smiles into this world. Don't follow trends, follow your heart. See you next week. Thank you. Namaste. Don't follow trends, follow your heart.